All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you the sense of taste. This is the last section within the special senses. Um, so this will be the last section that I teach um, over, you know, the, the, the ear and the nose um, and the eyes. Um, this will be leading up to our test. Um, I will let you know how that's gonna go and what format that's gonna come in. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started on our sense of taste. Obviously, your sense, your sense of taste takes place on the tongue. Uh, tongue is a pretty amazing organ. Uh, your tongue is covered with these little hair-like structures, these little peg-like structures called the papillae. Okay? The papillae are, are um, there's different types of papillae. Uh, they give your, your, your tongue its texture. Um, some animals have uh, papillae that are very different from ours. For example, um, if you've ever uh, felt a cow's tongue, which you know a lot of us deal with cows, we've had a cow lick us. Uh, it's almost like sandpaper. Their papillae are um, keratinized a little bit, a lot like your fingernails. Okay, they're really tough, and that allows them to be, you know, uh, very rough which is important because they've got to wrap that tongue around vegetation, hold on it and pull it up so then they can bite it and rip it. Um, think about um, a cat. If you've ever had a cat lick you, um, I had a friend whose cat would sit on the back of the couch and lick your head. Not comfortable. Their papillae are sharp, almost like uh, teeth on their tongue. Again, they're keratinized, same, same protein that makes up your, pro your, your fingernails. Uh, and your hair. So, uh, and why would a cat have these papillae that are that are so sharp and that? Well, it's for grooming, right? Uh, when they lick themselves, their fur, they're able to essentially comb their fur with their tongue. It's really strange. Uh, our papillae are very soft, uh, and they serve a number of functions. Um, let me make sure I don't get ahead of myself. Um, there's three types of papillae on the tongue, and most do, a lot of people mistake papillae for taste buds. Uh, they're not. Your papillae are not taste buds. Let me fix this real quick. Um, you have taste buds, taste buds are microscopic. Uh, you have taste buds on some of your papillae but the papillae themselves are not a taste bud. Um, there's three types. You have the filiform. These are the ones that are the smallest. I'm gonna show you some pictures and some more information on them. They're the smallest, the ones that cover your tongue, make it look like it's almost like it's carpet, if, that makes, if that's a good description. Uh, you then have your fungiform papillae. Fungiform papillae um, are the ones that contain um, most of your taste buds on them. And then you have your circumvallate uh, papillae. These guys here are the ones that um, you can't really see. Uh, they're at the base of your tongue at the very back. Um, so you, you might have a few along the sides of your tongue, towards the, just on the lateral sides. Um, and they, they all three are, serve a little bit different functions. So let's start with the filiform. Uh, this is what the filiform papillae look like under an electron microscope. Um, you notice that the, they're constantly losing, just like your skin, they're constantly losing the outer cells as they die and are sloughed off, so they're renewed all the time. Uh, they do not have any taste buds. They cannot sense taste at all, okay? What their job is, is um, if your tongue were completely flat, everything would just kind of run off of it. But because our tongue is a sense organ, and it's helping us sense the, the taste of our food, it's picking up chemicals, we want to hold those chemicals against the tongue for as long as possible. So what these papillae do is they basically act like a sponge, and they absorb the chemicals and hold them near to the papillae that have the taste buds. 
Um, they hold the chemicals in place so that the chemicals don't just come off the tongue really easy, and it improves your sense of taste. Uh, you may have had the experience where you ate soup or hot chocolate and it was way too hot, you didn't know it, and you burned your tongue, and the next day your papillae are like gone in that spot, um, or maybe a couple days later. Well, what you did is you burned off your little papillae there, um, and you might notice that it feels a little different right there. Um, your neurons are a little closer to the surface, and um, you may even affect your sense of taste in that area just a little bit. Fungiform. Fungiform are your most important taste buds for the sense of taste. They're scattered throughout your tongue. So here they put a dye on a child's tongue and have them stick their tongue out, and you can see all these little spots here. These are not taste buds, people. They're not taste buds. A lot of people say, oh man, I got, maybe if you've ever had um, one of those that just hurt, you get one of these fungiform papillae that, that gets infected, um, and now they swell up and they hurt, and you wanna just bite it off. Maybe that's just me. Um, but uh, that is not a taste bud. That is a papilla that has been, um, that has been that is infected or swollen or something going on with it. Uh, they have taste buds on them, but taste buds are microscopic. The circumvallate papillae, these are found along the base of your tongue at the very, very, very back, back where it's gonna make you gag if you try to fill them. Um, you do get some along the edge of your tongues in some people. And they also contain taste buds. So now let's look at one of these uh, papillae, either the circumvallate or the fungiform. Here, if we look at the side, so right here they're showing a um, papilla. It has these taste buds, which are basically little neurons that stick out with little hair structures and pick up chemicals. So when you dissolve anything on your tongue, by the way, this is something you could try. Go dry your tongue off really dry. Use a, uh, some Kleenex or something. Dry your tongue off really dry and then put some sugar on it. You can't taste it. Um, the sugar has to be dissolved. If your tongue is dry, you can't taste the food. Can't do it. Um, your sugar has to be wet. Or sorry, <laughs> your tongue has to be wet because it has to dissolve those chemicals and then those chemicals have to interact with these taste buds that are found on the sides of the um, papillae. They're found on the sides of the fungiform and the circumvallate. There are four types of taste buds. Now, actually, there's been some research. This might be old. Um, information. There might actually be more. There's, there is some research that's showing there might be more than what I've given you here. But there are essentially four different, right now, four known uh, types of taste buds. There are taste buds that can taste sweet, taste buds that pick up sour, taste buds that pick up bitter, and taste buds that pick up stuff that's salty. And all of your different, there may be there has been some research that is pointing towards, there's also another taste buds that picks up lipids or fats. That's why fatty foods might, they think that's why fatty foods taste so good to us, is because your brain is sending a message, just like with sugary stuff, ooh, that's good, I want some more of that because that is high calorie, high energy food. That's why it, it is so good to us. Um, let's talk about sweet for a second. What is sweet? Well, if we look at a sugar, so, sugars kind of look like, uh, this is an example of one type of sugar. It's molecular structure. And you will not have to know the molecular structure of a sugar like this. I'm trying to show you what I mean by hydroxyl groups. Off of each of the carbons in a sugar, okay, sugar 
sugar or something like this. This is one example of many types of sugar. They have these OH groups that are covalently bonded to the carbons. These OH groups are called a hydroxyl group. And yes, you will have to know this. They are covalently bonded. Really important. To the sugar. And when these hydroxyl groups interact with the taste buds, the neurons that can bond to the OH, they send a message to our brain that that thing is sweet. That that is a sweet tasting substance because it has these. By the way, I think that this is the structure for fructose, which is the um, which is the fruit sugar, right? It's what makes fruits taste sweet to us because there's lots of these hydroxyl groups. They interact with your tongue, and then that interaction sends a message to the brain saying, ooh, this thing is sweet, it's delicious, and we love it because it's high calorie, and it means good energy source for us. H plus. And this is a hydrogen ion. Okay, if you remember, an ion is a positively or negatively charged atom or molecule. And it so happens that hydrogen ions right here are what taste sour. Anything you taste that tastes sour to you, it's because it's got hydrogen ions in it. Okay, that's why it tastes sour. So any acids, uh, when you put that acid in water, it gives off hydrogen ions. We taste that as a sour food. Okay, bitter. Bitter are alkaloids. Uh, I don't really want to go into a whole bunch of depth, a whole big depth on alkaloids, but I will tell you that the biggest alkaloid out there is OH minus. This is a hydroxide ion. Now, this is where students mess up. This is OH. This is OH. Well, what's the difference? This one is covalently bonded to a sugar molecule. This one has a negative charge. It is an ion. These guys here are bitter. These guys here that are not negatively charged, even though they're OH, are sweet. Totally different chemicals even though they have the same atoms. They have very different structure, okay? So hydroxide ions will always taste bitter to you, okay? If you have a bitter food, like uh, say um, sometimes broccoli can taste bitter to people, or you know, there's lots of other bitter foods. Um, and then some people actually really enjoy the bitterness. Uh, think of almonds sometimes can be bitter, or if you ever had an apricot seed, or a peach seed, um, they are all bitter. It is important, this is a side note, not all that critical for what you have to know, but it is kind of interesting. Uh, alkaloids can be very, very, very toxic to humans. Um, that, when you talk about plants that make you sick, or plants that could possibly kill you if you eat them, uh, say for example, hemlock or that, they usually have a very bitter taste. Um, peach seeds, and apricot seeds are both toxic, but only, and apple seeds as well. If you've ever eaten an apple seed, you'll notice it's a very bitter taste. That bitter taste you're tasting is the alkaloids within it. That's the toxic part of that plant. So you can't, you don't wanna to eat too many of those. Um, as far as peach seeds or apricot seeds, you can eat one or two and you're gonna be fine. If you eat a few cups, you could potentially kill yourself. It could be lethal to you. So, something to think about. Last is salts. Potassium ions, you all notice all these are ions. Um, do they have a positive or a negative charge? Potassium ions, sodium ions, calcium ions, chlorine ions, all of these will taste salty to you. And even though they may not taste like the same type of salt, like for example, sodium is the biggest one. Sodium 
is what you put on, is your table salt. Even though there are chlorine ions in sodium, that positive sodium ion is the one that tastes salty to us. Um, iron, if you've, ever, if you've ever tasted something, I think it has a two plus charge, if I'm not mistaken. Iron um, is another one that's, uh, if you've ever tasted blood, tastes metallic. If you've ever tasted something that tastes a little rusty, if you've ever had a food that tastes like it's got metal in it, uh, that's because your tongue is picking up those ions and it gives sort of an irony, salty taste. Uh, it's similar, uh, it's the same uh, neurons that are firing it for salt. But sodium is their biggest ion as far as salty stuff goes. Sodium can be bad for you, right? We all know this. Too much sodium, especially if you have high blood pressure, can be really detrimental. It causes your blood pressure to go higher, okay, because of osmosis. But some people will have high potassium salts that they put on their food instead of high sodium salt. The salt tastes a little bit different, but it doesn't raise your blood pressure as much as the sodium does. So you'll see some people that'll have that kind of thing if they're worried about their blood pressure. Um, one last thing I'll add is if you've ever drank distilled water, yuck. It is bland, it's weird, it's, um, it tastes strange. Um, might be something to try. If you go to a grocery store and you wanna buy some distilled water and try it out, it really doesn't taste very good. However, mineral water or tap water, especially in our area, tastes pretty good to us. It has a nice taste to it. Well, that's because there's dissolved minerals in water. And if you go buy yourself mineral water, generally it tastes a little better because the, the, it has more of these dissolved ions, which gives it a little bit of a salty taste almost. Um, you can also um, notice that warm foods taste different than cold foods because the warm foods tend to interact better with your taste buds than do cold foods, giving them more flavor. So what can it taste, what can affect the taste of food? Well, there's a lot, just like we said with the sense of smell, there's a lot involved in the limbic system. Also with the sense of taste, there's a lot involved with the limbic system, meaning your emotional system, right? It's how your body reacts to it emotionally. So the look of food, you know, if I have a hamburger and it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of discolored, maybe a greenish color, ew, you know? Um, we have learned, um, and I think it's a lot of it's innate, that's just in us, that says, hey, this food is good and this food is bad, based on uh, you know, our ancestry. This food made you sick, this food made you healthy. So those healthier foods tend to be more appealing to us. Um, the smell of food, you can have a great looking smell, a great hamburger, beautiful looking hamburger, but if it doesn't smell right, it's not gonna taste right. Um, thoughts or memories, uh, both of these have to do with, um, I remember when I was a kid, I got the stomach flu and I um, ended up having, uh, my sister made butterscotch pudding that day. And to this day, every time I have butterscotch pudding, it brings back memories of being sick to my stomach. I just don't even like it, right? Um, thanks a lot, my sister, for ruining butterscotch pudding for the rest of my life for me. Um, but you know, uh, and it can go both ways, right? You can have good memories of a food or bad memories of a food and it can affect how that food appeals to us. How it's prepared. Think about this for a second. What if you took a steak and put it in the blender? Is it gonna taste the same as a steak that's, you know, a normal steak? You could take the most beautiful, juicy steak, put it in the blender and it'd be very unappealing to us. Um, that's because of the way it's interacting with our taste buds and the texture interacting with our tongue. And obviously temperature. Cold fries, need I say more? Uh, cold fries do not taste good, I don't think under any circumstance. And that has to do with its texture and its temperature can affect how it interacts with your tongue and your taste buds. Okay, that is the end of um, of the chapter, actually. So um, you will have, uh, just please look on Canvas. Make sure that you are following 
Canvas really carefully. Uh, I will have assignments posted on there. I have due dates posted on there. I will let you know, like I said, this is pre-recorded, and so um, you're still on spring break when I recorded this. So I will let you know, and I'll put it in the announcements, what we're gonna do on tests and quizzes and how we're gonna handle those. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. It's my best way. I, I might be here at the school, but like, I don't know if I told this class, but um, I'm gonna spend a lot of time in the greenhouse because I'm doing a lot of that work by myself. So um, if you can't get hold of me um, here at the school on my phone, please go ahead and email me and I will try to get back to you just as soon as I can. Thanks and good luck everybody.